abundantly than they all, yet not I, but his grace which is in me. The asset of grace. Paul the Apostle was practically saying, if there is anything you have seen in my life, if there is anything you desire in my life, if there is anything you think I am, the grace of God was responsible for it. He was literally saying, there is nothing, there would have been nothing called Paul the Apostle without grace. Beloved brothers and sisters, the grace of God is an asset. One of the greatest assets that anybody can have on earth. What is in grace? Number one, grace makes great. Paul said, I am who I am by grace. The grace of God is behind the making of the great, especially in the scriptures. Grace makes great. Number two, grace brings profit. He said, my labor was not in vain. It was profitable. It is the grace of God that makes a life productive, resourceful, and profitable. Where you don't waste your time, you don't waste your energy. Grace makes you to take one step and you see the results of a thousand steps. Grace makes you to spend one day like you have spent a whole year compared with others. Grace makes great. Grace brings profit. Thirdly, grace brings strength. The grace of God is a strength of men. Paul the Apostle said, I labored more abundantly than they all. I outworked all of them. I walked beyond Peter, walked beyond James, and walked beyond every one of them. He said, yet, it is not me, but the grace of God which is in me. Grace will be a secret of wearilessness. It will be a secret of tirelessness. It will be a secret of unusual energy. That is grace. Fourthly, grace brings speed. Grace brings speed. You see, I was not qualified to be called an apostle. I was the least of all of them. But now I'm in front. Grace makes a late comer to, in the, to the kingdom to become a frontliner. Grace will take a man from the background of life to the forefront of life. Grace makes you to achieve in a short time what it takes a lifetime for others to accomplish. Grace brings speed. And finally, grace brings impact. When a person carries grace, his impact is massive. You live such a life where your generation does not claim the ignorance of your existence. Nobody can claim they are not aware that you lived. Grace brings impact. Brethren, if grace is so important, what will be the doorway to grace? He said, let us, come, let us come therefore boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain help and find grace to help in the time of need. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16, that we may find mercy and obtain grace to help in time of need. When you confirm to God that you are helpless in yourself, then you are qualified for grace. When you confirm to God that you, are, you need Him, then you are qualified for grace. When you confirm to God that without Him you can do nothing, then you are qualified for grace. He said, my grace is made perfect in weakness. The helplessness of man provokes the almightiness of God. Hallelujah. The helplessness of man. It provokes the almightiness of God. Number two, prayerfulness. So first is helplessness. Second is prayerfulness. When a man is prayerful, he cannot escape grace. The throne of, the place of prayer is the throne of grace. If you are able to access as frequently as possible the throne of grace, which is the place of prayer, then you never run out of grace. Paul the apostle was a man of prayer. He said, I prayed in tongues more than you all. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18, no wonder he walked in grace more than they all. And finally, grace answers to selflessness. So, helplessness, 
prayerfulness, selflessness. Why do we say so? God resists the proud or the one who is full of himself and giveth grace to the humble. James chapter 4 verse 6. When you are selfless, unassuming, not struggling to get the glory, not struggling for human popularity and celebration, when you are empty of self, then you become full of God and full of grace. That is why the proud will never access grace. The arrogant, the ostentatious, the braggadocious, the people whose, whose life centers around themselves, when they worship self and celebrate self to the detriment of, to the, to the, to the exclusion of God and to everybody, they never access grace. And when they lack grace, they end in disgrace. When they lack grace, they crash. God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. That is why pride goes before a fall and a haughty spirit before destruction. Because if you lack grace, you must crash. If you lack grace, you must crash. If you are proud, you will lack grace. And if you lack grace, you crash. I welcome you today to this journey of grace and your life will never remain the same. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Can you pray this prayer with me right now? Especially you are watching and you have not given your life to Christ at all. Pray this prayer and say after me, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner in need of help. Come into my life and make me a new person. Today I have decided to follow you, Lord, and no turning back. Forward ever, backward never. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I believe you meant that prayer and I look forward to to hearing from you. Our numbers are on the screen, uh, email addresses are on the screen, and whichever you, way you want to contact us, let us know. We are waiting to hear from you. And for everyone who have just watched, proceed in helplessness before God. Proceed in prayerfulness. Proceed in selflessness. And you will see grace that will amaze you. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.